Next question. How can I evaluate my iOS app architecture? Well, ideally, you need some metrics. For example, productivity. Is the team as productive now as they were a year ago, or a month ago, or a week ago? If things take longer now than a month ago, something is getting in the way. Maybe it's the architecture. Maybe it's the system design that is getting in the way. This is an indicator that maybe the design is getting in the way of the developers. As the system is getting harder and harder to change, the team gets slower and slower. You can also ask your peers, are you happy with the current design? Do you find it easy to deal with this code base? Then you need to evaluate the responses. Maybe they're not happy, not because the design is not good, but because they don't understand the design. Maybe they need some training. They need some support. Maybe pairing more with the developers will help them understand the design. But if they have experience, they understand the design and they just hate it. They are not happy with the design. They know it's getting their way. Well, that's one metric you should assess and find a solution to improve the design, to make things easier for the team, thus increasing productivity in the whole business. Other metrics, modularity in the code base. Is it flexible? Is it easy to add a new feature? Does it affect multiple modules? Is an easy change easy and is a hard change possible? Can we add features easily? Can we extend features easily? Can we remove a feature easily? Can we replace a framework easily? Can we replace like a vendor? If you're using Realm as a persistence framework, but now the business decided to use another one, or there's a new version that is better, but they have different APIs, how easy it is to replace the infrastructure details? It should be easy. If it's not, there's some coupling crossing modules. Another metric is testability and regressions. How many regressions you had in the past year? past month, past week? Is it increasing? Why? Quite a question. Why? Because maybe the team is not testing the code, then you start having more regressions. But not because they don't want to test. It's just because it's too hard to test with the current design. That's why you need to assess how easy it is to test the code base. Because if it's hard, the developers will not test the code. Regressions will go up. So it should be easy to test the code. And maintainability. Do you need big refactorings often? Do you need to stop development to perform refactorings? Because ideally, refactorings should be part of the process. Every time you're adding a new feature or changing some features, it should be part of the process to refactor it. You shouldn't have to schedule refactoring. It should be part of the process. But if you need big refactorings often, you don't have a good design. Right. Or the team doesn't have the skills to maintain the code base. Maybe they need training. So you need to assess all those metrics together because the code base is evolving constantly. Every time you add a new feature, every new commit can change the code base. It can make things more coupled or it can introduce a regression. It can make testing harder in the future. So every tiny change can affect the system architecture. So it's a constant evaluation process. Everyone in the team should be conscious about it. And if they are not, they need training. So to evaluate the app architecture, you need to check the metrics that is impacting the team productivity. Yeah, and all these metrics are just connected. Productivity is a computed metric. If you have, for example, good results in your technical metrics, then most probably productivity is going to be good. But if you have terrible results in your technical metrics, then productivity will suffer. Guaranteed. There is absolutely no way as time progresses, the productivity is going to remain high or even the same, not even high. Yes, it's a constant effort. It is. And these metrics need constant monitoring. And not just these metrics, because these are high-level metrics, but other metrics in the code base as well. We mentioned in the past about build times or test times. These are good indicators. They're not like the most fancy ones, but they are good indicators. Because as more code is being poured in your code base, then these indicators will either suffer or the team will find good ways to support the new additions. Thus, the operation will remain fast, will remain smooth. Yeah. How often do you deliver the app? If you deliver every six months, can you cut this by half? Can you deliver every three months? And then can you cut it by half again until you're releasing frequently, maybe weekly? 
That's the level of productivity you can achieve with a clean architecture in a productive team. So you need both the technical skills and the constant effort of applying them with discipline.